Hello again, welcome to Exo Photography. Uh, today I was thinking about uh, speaking a bit more of the focuser. Um, it's from Prima Luce Lab. It's the Sesto Senso, the first version. Uh, they since have released a second version with Wi-Fi capabilities, but this is the first version without, so bear with me. So, um, the build quality of this, uh, it's outstanding. It's a uh, all aluminium house. Um, it's a plastic cover here. I have actually uh, taken mine apart, I want this one black, uh, it's uh, delivered with white plastics, I don't like white, so uh, I painted it black, it came out pretty good. Um, when you're mounting the focuser uh, motor on the focuser, you need to remove the focuser knob and actually just screw this collar onto the, the focuser. Uh, it was a breeze installing this um, but this isn't delivered with the uh, bigger color uh, which you are going to need if you mount it on a uh, bigger uh, feather touch focuser in this case the true three inch uh, model so what you are doing is that you are first attaching the bigger color here on to the uh, motor unit and then you are attaching this bigger collar onto the focuser. To attach the drive shaft, uh, it's openings in the back of the focuser, um, which uh, you can um, attach the uh, extension for the motor axle. So it's very straightforward and simple installations. Um, be aware though that the power uh, plug, the 12 volt DC plug, isn't the same size as uh, the other equipment. I, I think the standard size it is 5.5 uh, millimeters, and the center tip is 2.1 millimeter. But this is a bigger center tip. I believe it's 2.5 millimeter. So, but check that out. Um, uh, it's probably written in the specs for. For the focuser. Um, a standard USB mini cable or is it a micro? Ah, it's micro cable but the new version has USB-C so you don't have to bother. Uh, it also has a port for a temperature sensor there. Um, the temperature sensor if you want to compensate for uh, if the telescope uh, moves in and out during the night. Um, this is made out of carbon, so it's thermally very stable. And I also refocus every 60 minutes uh, in my uh, software. So I don't really feel that I need a temperature compensation. Yeah, um, that's about it. Um, I am going to show you some, um, some slews. Well, not slews, but I'm going to wreck the... Uh, draw you in and out for you so you can uh, see how quick it is but also um, hear how it sounds um. so this is the main window um, it actually looks like this but I uh, usually uh, expands the controls uh, so what you first want to do is uh, search for the COM port and you open this uh, and as you see here um, the current position of my focuser is 69,000 and it counts in steps you also see the serial number and the firmware number of the motor focuser uh, 
I want to say that I am using the first version of the Sesto sensor. Um, if you buy one today, you will receive the second version, with, with, uh, which also have uh, Wi-Fi capabilities. Um, but this is the first version, so um, yeah, that's that. Uh, once you um, first open up the software, you need to calibrate uh, the focuser. I am not going to show you that because I have already calibrated mine and I don't want to mess with the settings. Um, but what you are doing, you hit the calibration and another window appears. In that window you are asked to uh, set the draw tube of the focuser midway, so in the middle of uh, racked in and racked out. Um, then you click next, uh, then you're supposed to uh, drive the motor uh, inwards uh, so that the draw tube of the focuser is almost flush against the focuser body. Then you hit next and then you uh, are running the motor so that the draw tube of the focuser is in the outmost position and then you hit calibrate. And that's it. So it's fairly simple. Uh, that's why I'm not going to, to show you that today. But I am going to show you how this uh, button works. So if you want to move some steps, say 100 steps outwards or inwards, or maybe 1000 steps, you just put it in here. If you want to uh, go uh, faster, um, and basically a manual uh, override, uh, you just hit this or this button here, uh, then it will go um, basically as long as uh, you hit stop. The most important settings is this one. Um, I usually get confused with these buttons here. I actually don't know which is in or which is out. Uh, I believe Prima Luce Lab could have made this program a bit more intuitive. Um, maybe just add an in or out button instead of arrows. You can also reverse, uh, but then again, if you have reversed the direction, which is in and which is out. So yeah, that's that. Um, here we have some quick settings. Uh, if you have a really heavy image train, you can uh, just hit heavy and slow. Or if you have a very, very light uh, image train, maybe just a planetary camera, uh, you can go light and fast. I have chosen a medium settings. Um, and this is, I have not changed any of these except for the hold. I don't know what the uh, default value for hold is, uh, but I noticed that my uh, focuser motor uh, got very hot and that is a sign of that you might lower this value and the motor has no problem holding the image train in a, in a vertical position. So uh, this works for me. Uh, don't forget to save the parameters. Um, what you are doing when you hit save parameters is that you are saving it into the focus motor, not on the software itself. So if something goes wrong with the software, these values are stored into the internal memory of the uh, focus motor. Um, yeah, uh, that's basically it with the software. Uh, it's fairly simple, but uh, again, Prima Luce Lab, uh, please, if you are considering making a software 2.5 or 3.0, please add some more intuitive um, way of uh, uh, telling which is in or which is out. Um, yeah, that's it. This is a uh, autofocus routine, so I basically select which filter I'm going to use and I hit start. The uh, Astro System Austria sequence software 
is uh, sending commands to Maxim DL, which is controlling the camera, and it starts th taking exposures, and it uh, also sends commands to the Sesto sensor, which moves the focuser, and it is measuring a uh, V-slope. Um, I will go into that later, what it actually means, but it's basically measuring the uh, the radius or the diameter of the uh, star value um, and it got a focus in the middle and it's done so the half flux diameter is uh, actually a kind of measurement of how uh, spread out the star is uh, on the camera chip um, it is measuring uh, from a uh, well it says the the energy is is uh, contained in the center and when it does that it moves the focuser in and out and it's making a V curve as you can see on the right where the lowest uh, value uh, in the graph is uh, the best uh, and those values are where the star is uh, less spread out um, so it's kind of tricky to explain how it does but it, it basically is uh, the smaller the star uh, the better it is and it's measuring the half flux diameter and not the full way half maximum uh, because it, it's more robust measurement uh, especially for stars when they are out of focus and the stars are out of focus uh, otherwise you wouldn't need to run a focus routine so I was thinking that I might show you um, the prices and the uh, preferences on the, the focuser that I see uh, so the new version has a Wi-Fi capability as you can see um, this is, you can control the focuser uh, via your phone, but it's also um, a kind of a future thing for the ASCOM uh, lads uh, are, um, they're actually writing some new drivers uh, called the ASCOM Alpaca. And basically, uh, that is redefining on how we are connecting to our astronomy gear. Um, it's kind of like you can direct connect to the gear without going through a, um, a computer. The equipment itself uh, is uh, not standalone, but almost uh, you can direct connect through them um, so it's maybe like a, a, uh, a web server uh, hosting kind of thing um, we will get to that later uh, I haven't uh, read so much about it yet but it is interesting on how we might connect in the future to all our gear so uh, Besides the first version, you have the USB-C uh, and the Wi-Fi capabilities and also this Arco port here. Um, you can connect to a camera rotator. I don't know how many guys out there use rotators, but um, I don't. But if it's there, it's there, I presume. Um, so the list price on Prima Lucha Labs website is uh, 300 euros. Uh, and I believe it's the same price on the telescope service, the Telescope Express homepage. Uh, be aware though that if you have a larger focuser, uh, as of the uh, Starlight Feather Touch, you might need one of those adapters uh, for the a little bit bigger color on the uh, focuser. Um, this is the OPT web page and it's the same price over here it's uh, 300 bucks and also the adapters 
uh, I just want to mention that uh, I have been using this focuser for about uh, a bit uh, over half a year now and I am blown away by its uh, its speed it's very very precise uh, I actually uh, used a one of those magnetni magnetic uh, foot uh, calipers uh, who is measuring in the hundreds of uh, uh, millimeter and I just ran the focuser back and forth back and forth and it's hit the same spot each time so it's very precise uh, before that I used one of these it's the USB no sorry uh, there we go uh, it's the USB focus um, it's not as good looking uh, but it's worked for me for about three or four years uh, it's not as fast but it has manual controls so if you are not as uh, dig down in this hobby as I am maybe this is uh, a good uh, starter alternative um, one thing I do really really like about focuser though is that you have the controller box uh, built into the motor itself as the Sesto Senso have uh, and of course uh, the design well it's Italian what can you say it's almost as good as Swedish design so that's it um, if you like uh, these videos please comment like and share and please subscribe so I can make some more videos to you guys out there be safe out there over and out